Moving to the other side of the world is tough. We know this from our own experience of moving to Australia during a global pandemic. To help you decide whether a life down under is for you, this series aims to share with you the highs and the lows of the migration journey, hoping to help and inspire you to make the move yourself. If you're already thinking about moving to Australia, or you're not sure where to start, then this episode is sponsored by True Blue Migration Services. Speak to them today and mention us and you will get a free visa assessment where they'll be able to tell you all of your options for moving to this beautiful country. Speak to them now on their website at TrueBlueMigration.com. Our guest today made the move all the way from Cambridge in the UK to Perth in Western Australia. What's it like moving with four kids and also when you have to factor in the dreaded teenagers how is the adult perspective different from the kids well in this episode we're going to find out from both sides g'day jazz and martin how are you going yeah good hey ross how are you mate you good yes no i am very good uh i have had a lovely day down the park with aurora which could you do that in autumn really late autumn going into winter in the uk probably not not in shorts and t-shirt though no exactly exactly. we were down the beach having a swim this afternoon so yeah oh you beat me (laughs) how often are you down your new local beach Uh, all the time all the time the kids the kids love it I think we've been here four weeks tomorrow and I reckon maybe three days we haven't been to the beach. We've, yeah. been, we've been to the beach pretty much every day. Barbecues down there at the public, barbecues yeah. and stuff. Yeah, it's um, pretty you, much every day, mate. You can literally tell we're the Brits because we're in like shorts, strap tops, all the Australians, if there's any there, are like wrapped up nice and warm. But the kids like love getting in the water. You can't take them to the beach and just say walk along the beach because they will get in the water, won't they? Yeah. Like, they love it. Tell us about your life before you moved to Australia. So, <laughs> we um, basically lived near Cambridge. So, quite a nice sort of city. We were in a little town just outside there. I'm a midwife and you do... Yeah, I'm, I'm project manager. I used to work for Cambridge University. Yeah. We lived there quite a long time because I did my training there. Prior to that, we lived in Germany. So, we've also lived wow. before. Yeah, and then just moved there. Obviously, the kids are settled there. So they were, one of them was in secondary school, the other's in primary school. I also do obstetric sonography as well. So we had quite a nice little like pattern of my shift. And you worked a lot from home, didn't you? So but it just got a bit boring, I think. I think you just get stuck in like the everyday just routine of stuff don't you nothing's different yeah it was a very comfortable little life yeah um like jazz said after after i left the army we moved to to cambridge so that she could go to university and do midwifery we ended up having the four children sort of every sort of three years we had another kid <laughs> um yeah and then as i said that pretty much that entire time i was working for for cambridge university press and assessment um just through various jobs ended up as a project manager and then about a year ago that's when we hit the reset button just mm. after covid watching your videos, watching the BAM family and watching everybody <laughs> saying how great it is. And after so many years of thinking and talking about it, we thought, let's give it a bash. We, it um, we even bought a house like in 2020 because we were just, I think that was like our next goal. Even though like Australia's always been in the background of like one day we'll go. It was just kind of like in a few years, in a few years. When we've done this, when we've done, I don't know, whatever with work, when we've had this child, do you know what I mean? And then eventually, yeah, we just, we bought the house thinking, it kind of went quiet on the Australia front, didn't it, for a little while? Like, we didn't really talk about it for a while. And I think our family thought that was the end of the chat with mm-hmm. Australia chat. Yeah, and then last year we were like, let's just do it. Let's just, I think, I think he would have come years ago. It was me that probably held us back in the UK long was not it? I think he would have, like, jumped on a plane. It's the first time in, a, in, in the 15 or so years that we were talking about coming to Australia. It's the first time that we didn't have an excuse not to come. Yeah. So... We, we, we took the plunge and we said, you know, if we don't do it now, we'll never do it. And with schools as well, we'll because won. like Latia is, so she'll be going into year 10 this year. And obviously that's, they're quite important years. And we were like, if we don't do it now, then we're going to have to delay it till after she does the GCSEs. Then it's A-levels. Will she want to come then? Then it's the uni. Do you know what I mean? It's just like one thing mm-hmm. after another, isn't it? So this felt like the best time for us. When did you first have the whole moving to Australia thoughts how long have you been having these kind of, oh, let's, and then it keeps getting delayed? Ja- Jasmine and I met when we were teenagers. So yeah. ja- Jazz was 14, I was 15. And pretty much from the off, we just, you know, we, we, we always had Australia in the back of our minds. We saw it on the telly, we saw. I grew up watching Home and Away. <laughs> so I always had this yeah. dream of like this Home and Away life. Yeah. So I always pictured that's what we'd be doing. You're just on the day. wrong side of but, Australia yeah. though, aren't you now? Everyone always says that to me. They're like, well, why, are you on, why, why are you in Perth then? Because... Obviously, home away from this side, but and it's always been Perth for us as well. Like, that's the weirdest thing. Like even years ago, before people really even came to Perth, do you know, when it was really quiet, years and years ago, we were always wanting to come 
to Perth. Just somewhere, I think the lifestyle, like the, the weather and the lifestyle, we were just like, we do not want to settle in the UK mm-hmm. forever. And actually, like all the kids will tell you, they've all been brought up knowing that at some point we will move to Australia. That's always, they've always known that was going to happen. It's just being brave enough, yeah. isn't it? It's a massive, massive move and it's scary. And yeah, it's not just something you do like overnight. And I think when we then joined, like we then joined like an immigration company and then I think that was when it became real for us. We were like, if we're paying a company to get us over there, then we need to actually make it work and move. So that was it really. So aside from all of those things you mentioned, what were the most important reasons for your move? For me, I wanted to make sure that the kids grew up with that ability to experience life, go out and experience nature, uh, in, mingle with friends and just have the opportunity to, to sort of be themselves and, and experience things. In the UK, they had lots of friends and things like that, but you know, with the weather, with the, the cost of living and things like that, it's very, very difficult for us to, to be able to go out and afford luxuries and, and things like that. And the general sort of state of play around where we were living, there's not lots of nice natural parks and you don't have the woods and the beach is two hours away and stuff like that. It's very, very difficult to have that kind of lifestyle that you can have here. The beach for us is, you know, four kilometres away and, and things like that. It's These are all things that at the moment, we're loving seeing our children flourish by going outside in the sunshine and Mm. playing with other kids and things like that and yeah that's what we wanted we wanted a nice active lifestyle that doesn't cost a bomb and the sun shining while you do it yeah you didn't want your kids growing up having to be stuck to an xbox or or living indoors i genuinely think since we've been here the kids have hardly like even watched tv like i know that it's obviously new we've been out and aussie tv is rubbish (laughs) yeah and that um yeah I just I just think they've just wanted to get out haven't they like they want to get out all the time and even after school like back in the UK they'd get home and then yeah they'd be on their iPads or the telly or whatever whereas like here like they want to go out they want to go to the park or they want to go to the beach or they want to go for a walk and you can't just stay in can you like I I think the sky is just so blue <laughs> and the sun's always shining I just think we've got to get out like we've got to make the most of it like you kind of don't want to waste the day when you have the That'll, uh, it'll start to fade. You wait till summer hits and it gets a little bit too warm, and you think, "No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay in, in the aircon right <laughs> yeah. now." Like, you know, we'll, we'll wait till three o'clock in the afternoon, and then you can have some fun. I'm sure there will definitely come a time. I think the weather's just been so nice since we've been here. Obviously, we've not been here very long, so you have to get yourself a nice beach shade as well. Yeah. Have you both started working yet? I've started this week. How does the work life balance compare? Even though you've only had yeah, a week. Yeah, I mean, I'm still doing twelve hour shifts like I was doing in the UK, only because. I'm sort of full time. I'm not gonna be full time. I'm literally full time for like two weeks, aren't I? And then I'm going down to part time hours. So I think then it'll it'll probably work much better. I think it, I've just tried to make the most of when we've had the days off. Yeah, I mean the fact that I can reduce my hours is great. To be fair, because that that then comes mm-hmm. down to the wages because the wages are so different, and the we can afford to do that. Like whereas in the UK, I was doing so many like extra shifts, wasn't I? So many like extra nights or weekends or whatever. And whereas in this job, like, hopefully I won't have to do any sort of weekends as well. I've been quite lucky. So, yeah, I just think it is much better in that sense. And the fact that I can be at home a bit more with the kids, especially because it's so important at the minute to, like, settle them in. And they obviously want to meet friends now. And they've, you know, they've been really, they've been quite good already, haven't they? Like, our oldest went out with a friend yesterday. And my youngest had a birthday party yesterday. Indy's going out with a friend after school Monday. Karen's got a little friend across the road that he also goes to school with that he can play with. So I feel like I want to be around for all those little dates, you know, to get them Mm -hmm. settled. And then hopefully, yeah, we'll we'll find some sort of balance and we'll just wait till he starts work because you start in a couple of weeks, don't you? Yeah, I start on the 13th of June. Um, I'm working down in the CBD. So, you know, that will be nice. It'll be different because I work from home for for quite a few years (laughs) with with the university. I think truth be told... I can't really complain about my job in the UK. They were good. You know, they were they're very flexible, very fair. I get paid a lot more over here than I did <laughs> in the UK. I think that's standard across all jobs. Um, everybody for the same type of work gets paid better here. I think the difference for you mainly, though, is back in the UK, the NHS, they get battered. You know, they're massively under-resourced. The pay they get for the job they do isn't very good. Whereas over here, the, the time and the quality of care that you getting with your women oh you just so, much, so better. much different so much better I mean I am working in the private sector so I don't know I can't compare it to public care but it's just different you know being a midwife is being a midwife isn't it delivering a baby is the same wherever you go but things are different like the 
you know, just small small things that you wouldn't even think about. But I think the quality of time that I've had with the women, and I've only literally just started, I feel like it's already so much more than what you would get in the UK because they are obviously short staffed and so many midwives I know are moving here and I do Mm -hmm. have friends that live even on the east coast as well that have also been midwives that have moved over that side as well so quite a few yeah obviously health professionals I think in general are thinking of doing it or moving over or have already come I think I think there's five or six midwives just from your hospital yeah yeah it's crazy here in Australia they've all made the move in the last 18 months wow that is crazy. The UK is missing out a trick, really, isn't it? Particularly with all of the the skilled workers who are getting qualified there and going, "Hey, if this is if this is it for the rest of my life, that, that's not what I signed up for." Um, surely there can be something a little bit better. So, in that case, I'm assuming, Jazz, we're all here on on your yeah. visa. What what visa have you managed to get for yourself? So we have come over on the um, like the PR one eight nine. We originally, mm-hmm. when we were looking into it, were offered. Uh, the 190 and the 491 were the two that we were kind of advised to go for. The kind of when when we started looking, sort of June, July last year, um, they basically said the 189 doesn't exist anymore. They stopped giving it out when yeah, the, like, COVID was um, came into practice and things like that. And then about a month or so after we signed up with our agent, the first round of 189s came out in August, and yeah. then we got invited in the October. Yeah. So they were like. If you want to go for the one eight nine, you can, but you'll probably be waiting a couple of years. <laughs> we were like, do you know what? Like, we're willing to take that risk, and we'd obviously seen that people had been invited. And then the the difference was was obviously we wanted to apply for the one ninety here, in like Western Australia, and for that you need to have a contract. So I actually got offered my job in like September, and because at that point we were getting ready to um, obviously do the I don't know expression of interest and things like that and because we knew that we were going to apply to this state I needed to have a job offer in place for them when we got invited it was ready to go and we didn't have that extra stress but we did also apply for other states as well so um Victoria New South Wales Wick, Queens Queensland was actually like our second choice of place to go wasn't it um but they didn't even need midwives that wasn't even a it's on the skill like a okay. list so we we did, obviously didn't apply for that one and then it wasn't long at all after like expressing our interest and then we were invited for the 190s for New South Wales and Victoria. We were told it would probably be a while for Western Australia. I don't know why. I don't think at the time they were just giving out many visas or inviting many people. And yeah, we held off only for like a couple of days and then we got invited for the 189. So we obviously decided to go with that. So it just gives you more flexibility. That's what you came over on, right? Yeah, no, we, we have a 189. I didn't know that they'd kind of stopped giving them out i know that obviously over covid and things things had become much less but i didn't really realize how they were focusing a lot of their efforts more on the not necessarily a sponsored visa visa but like one because the 190s and stuff they're they're state specific Mm. obviously to address the different um skills shortage issues but i'd be kind of thinking to myself well the 189 is still a skills Mm -hmm. shortage visa but i guess they were that hard up that they wanted to direct their you know the people to to where it is that they wanted but surely you'd you'd still have 189 visas so that's interesting no i mean yeah that that is that is the gucci visa it just let you do whatever you want whenever you want which is why we wanted to go for it and i think because it it was that kind of known as like the golden like ticket kind of thing because they it was Mm -hmm. kind of like not many people get them and and then you you know we went on all these forums that we were obsessed with like looking at loads of like Facebook groups you know all this sort of stuff and then seeing people's timelines like I was obsessed with timelines and then you get these people yeah. that are, I've been waiting a year I've been waiting this and I think COVID obviously did delay things a little bit so it gives you an unrealistic view of how long you'd actually yeah. have to wait for but anyway we were like well we might as well go for it like at the end of the day it is what it is we'll just have to wait and we obviously wanted it to work out well for us for when we get here and we didn't want um like a temporary visa because of the you get more benefits don't you with permanent residency so we didn't want to be in that yeah. situation especially with having the four kids the temporary visa meant we would have had to have paid certain school fees and things like yeah. that it would have just it would have been much much harder for us so having the golden ticket as, as they call it, it just it just meant we were able to slot in with almost all of the privileges that a, you know a yeah. citizen has and able to come here and enjoy it for what it is really i guess that's the whole point isn't it if you can provide a service because of your job and your profession that's that's why we're here isn't it you know you need me i need you let's all uh let's all have the yeah. benefits for it and we really didn't even have to wait very long like i think we got invited beginning of october we lodged like a few weeks later and 
by February we had a visa, didn't we? That might have been his next question. Oh, sorry. I, mean... <laughs> I was literally going to say, so so tell us about your migration journey <laughs> from kind of getting your visa. Because it sounds like you got it really, really quickly. Mm. But so what, did that mean if you were granted in February, was it all rush, rush, rush? What was that like? I think we kind of had our own like timeline in our head of what we wanted, didn't we? And it all worked out really well because Latia had a ski trip with school that we paid for beginning of April. So we were like... Got to get your money's worth there. Yeah, exactly. We were like, we are, we are staying for that because we've obviously paid for it. So um, we always wanted to come over like end of April, beginning of May. We were like, that would work out really nicely. And then obviously she wouldn't start year 10 and you know, all this sort of stuff. But you just don't know, do you? That's the thing with visas. You don't know how long it's going to be at all. Um, mm-hmm. You can only guess roughly when you watch other people get their visas and roughly how long it's taken. But again, you just don't know. I think the benefit for us is that I think going through an immigration company, we felt relaxed in that sense of they've done all the paperwork properly. Like there, there isn't going to be an issue with that. And we didn't really have much of a delay. I think we were quite organised and just on it. Like we were like, if we're doing this, we're doing it properly. But we're not going to hang around. We're not going to take our time. We've spent years and years thinking about it. So let's just do it. Let's just get everything we need. So that was, you did, you were really good at that, weren't you? Like everything we were told we need, he was on it. So again, we, when we first spoken to, um, to to our agency, they they were saying, you know, it could be 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. If you go for the 189, it could be four years. You know, it was it was crazy numbers being thrown mm-hmm. out there, but it was just a case of, we know we want to do it, so let's give it a back. They said to us, 12, yeah, mainly 12 to 18 months, didn't they? They said, that's use that as your timeline, roughly. I think that's, to be fair, that's what's quoted on the, uh, the website, because yeah. at one point over COVID, it went up to 36 yeah. months or something crazy like that. Yeah. yeah. It was it was a long time, but then once once the ball started rolling, um, or Jazz had to do a skills assessment, and then we had to get certain things signed off and transcripts. Oh, and that PTE and... exam, I do... that was stressful. Like you did the PTE, I did the IELTS. Did you? But I'm, I... Did you have to do the higher like the academic one? Yeah, I think so. That's what yeah. I did, right? Yeah. She did really well, but she had to do the the PTE because. IELTS belonged to the company that I was working for. Yeah, so I, I, did, I couldn't so. do it. <laughs> <laughs> so a little conflict of interest there. Yeah. It, it, it could have been looked at. So yeah, but that was the, yeah, that was the weirdest test I've ever done in my life. Everything they said, whenever they said this is how long it would take, for example, like the skills assessment for the midwifery side of things, yeah, it would take six weeks. That took like three weeks, didn't it? Everything that they said to us was always shorter than what we were told. And then... There was, there was, quite, there was quite a lot. Um, I, I believe there was a change in government or something just before we started looking into everything. So th- there was quite a big mm-hmm. push on, okay, we want to sort of revamp the immigration process. Yeah, I think it was a good time for us. It's, so we kind of just started mm-hmm. looking just at the time where they were really pushing out, we want all these skilled workers to come in. And it just worked out perfectly mm-hmm. for us. And then everything was going really, really well on our side as well. So when we had to go away and get something signed or a transcript from the university, it was it was almost done immediately. So... There was no waiting around or anything like that. And uh, other than once we'd actually lodged the visa, then we were constantly looking at the IMI accounts. You know, Mm. it says you should be done in 105 days. We were like, it's 106. Why why have we not got it? But other than that, But we um, We did also front load as well. So we um, did our medicals and our police checks in like... Well, the police checks we did pretty much straight after we had actually lodged and the medicals we did in December... So we never had a case officer or anything like that. We just went straight from that to getting our visas. So, yeah, it mm-hmm. just all seemed to... I feel like with Australia, everything's just fallen into place for us. Like, it's all... Everything's just... Even getting a house here, which is, you know, really tricky because everyone tells you there's this rental crisis and stuff like that. And then I feel like everything's just fallen into place for us, hasn't it? It's all kind of worked out. We've been we've been very lucky. How did you find it, getting the house then? Was that a challenge at all? Well, we went through... Um, Claymore Thistle. I don't know if I'm allowed to name names, but <laughs> Claymore Thistle. So, um, go for it. Yeah, they were kind of recommended with the immigration company that we went through, and they were really good, weren't they? Because I, I did not want to come over here and be stuck without a house or be in temporary accommodation because we couldn't sort out schools because um, we didn't have a permanent mm-hmm. address, and obviously the priority was to try and get the kids into school to try and normalise them so that they can make friends and get into sort of a routine. So we, yeah, went through this company, and they were really good, weren't they? They just asked for. We just had to do like a statement. We're a bit about us to sell ourselves, basically. Yeah, we wrote a personal statement. Mm. Uh, we provided sort of references from the state oh, agents that we yeah. were using in the UK who were going to rent our house out and stuff like that. So they gave us lots yeah. of different tips that we could upload all this stuff to real estate to support our application for a rental. We paid what we thought was a lot of money at the time. It was about £2,000. Um, 
But at the end of the day, we would have ended up spending that on Airbnbs or hotels mm. or temporary accommodation before we found this anyway. So yeah, in the in the long run, it, it's worked out better because it meant we got off a plane, we turned up at the house, we had the keys, and we know that we're here for at least 12 months now. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> and I guess if you've got four kids with young kids as well, that's not a risk that you kind of want to take. No, I mean, it's it, really scary because all the everything you read like on these you know groups is just how hard it is to get a house and they've been trying, they've been to various houses and still no luck and so did the the company did they find it difficult getting you a place or they, how did that work well, basically she she would just send us houses that she liked sort of looked at obviously she spoke to us found out what our criteria was she looked at houses for us um or we had sent her so every day we'd be on like real estate and be like we like this we like that so she must have seen a good like what five six seven properties maybe within we a asked, few days we, we asked her to look at six properties so we went on to real estate but these are the kind of things we look at. We gave her sort of the wish list and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, she went around mm-hmm. looked at about six properties. We applied for three of them. Um, we were accepted on two, and then we took this one. They did say, right, you're going to have to um, like offer more money. Like that might be an option because to try and secure it. So we were like, we were prepared for that, or offer three six months in advance. You know, this was kind of like top of our budget, wasn't it? So we never actually offered any more. We were like, that is it. We can't go any higher than that. And we would, ju- and then they accepted it. So we just, yeah, feel really lucky that. I think it just depends, like where it is. I mean, we don't know. We don't. We didn't know where we were going to be. We'd never been to Australia before. I don't even know who said that. We've never been to the country before until we moved here. Um, this dream was all based on home and away. <laughs> it, it was based on home. <laughs> <laughs> so we we had no idea where you know where's a good place to live, where's not a good place live i was obsessed with googling crime rates and things like that like it sounds really silly but i was also we were just kind of advised just look for good secondary schools and base your search around that which is what we did really wasn't it the company that helped us were really good as well like if there were places that we kind of looked like the look of they would advise on whether they thought it was a good area or not or whether the schools had a good reputation or not so that was really handy as well because if you don't know we just had to rely on what other people were sort of telling us i think as well when we were trying to look at all of the you know the suburbs and stuff like that that are around perth uh, we live in woodvale which is, is apparently is a very very good suburb very safe when we were sort of looking into which suburbs we should go to and stuff though we were looking you know what crime rates and things like that now from what i understand reading it where they say it's a high crime rate for Perth, I wouldn't mind living somewhere yeah, like that in the UK. It's different, I mean? yeah, it is, it's different, crime, isn't it? crime rates is looked at very differently in the UK yep. compared to what it is here. I, think. I find when they they talk about crime here, even if it makes like the news, it's not very long until they go, "Oh yeah," and we caught them. Mm. Like that sort of, you, you never hear that in the UK. Like the crime you would hear about in the news, like someone's someone's died. And they just never found the perpetrator. Or if if they did, it's like, oh, yeah. And they went to prison for two months. Somebody was literally telling me yesterday that they they don't think the news is the same here as what it is in the UK. So in the UK, you'd hear lots of like about negative stuff or whatever. And you'd hear lots about the world. But they were saying here, you feel like you just kind of get Western Australia. They don't really know what's happening on the East Coast. I don't know if you find that over where you are. I don't know. I can't say we've even listened to news since we've been here, to be fair. We I'm not that we bothered. Have, we haven't watched telly, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because I lived in Australia through the COVID times, I think the other states in Australia might have a different opinion about West Australians <laughs> or West Australians. <laughs> um, you know, shut the border. <laughs> Uh, every time someone coughs in another state. But uh, no, I, I don't know. I've, I've never been to, to Western Australia. But I can imagine, because, yeah, especially because Perth is, you know, it's it's on its own isn't it that things can get a little bit polarized in the sense or or insular in just western australia it'd have to be kind of big world news like i'm assuming you heard tina turner died (laughs) that probably did pop up on there yeah just from facebook but oh really it wasn't even on the news it was even real i don't even know i don't it could have been the news (laughs) was it real (laughs) well no (laughs) him saying that she died and then he was like yeah that was from you that told me from facebook what's been the biggest challenge with your move then so far i think one probably the house situation in the uk because we had so we've got a house in the uk that we're renting out now mm-hmm. because we tried to sell it and obviously there have been loads Hammer of quasi quarting's uh little bombshell that that he dropped with parliament and it sent sort of uh, all the interest rates all the interest rates yeah. through the roof and it i uh, we so basically we we looked at trying to sell our house we signed up with um with our estate agents at the end of august beginning of september and then he went into parliament and said this is what we're going to do and he's he's 
it just sent the banks oh banks it went crazy into, yeah into into free fall and and interest rates went up to sort of four and a half and then the next month it was five and then the next mm. month it and it was it just got crazy so basically we we couldn't sell it sounds crazier than they are here that even worse <laughs> oh, it, it, we, we, we could we couldn't yeah. we couldn't sell our house yeah um, it, we, it was up on the market for about six months and and I mean that could have delayed us coming here but we were like no we're, we're definitely coming when we've kind of set our goal and we're going to make it happen so in the end we decided to rent it out I think probably in the long term it's going to benefit us but we obviously it would have been nice to have come over and have that money however in saying that we're not going to buy a house straight away here anyway until we know exactly mm. settle and um yeah but that's probably one of the biggest challenges I, I suppose another big challenge was although all the kids knew that we were coming here and things like that we were pulling them away from their friends and their you know their safety nets the their school network um a 14 year old decided she was going to go get a boyfriend three months before we came here and of course. she was <laughs> in love so trying to tear up that new love was was uh it was a nightmare as well. But... And the, and the... I've got all that to come. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, girls. They're just a whole different, yeah. Being truthful, we, we've been very lucky with the entire sort of move into Australia process. The kids have always been on board. We've got supporting family who, of course, they were sad to, to see us leave and move to the other side of the world, but they've always been very supportive and very um, helping us push forward with our dreams and ambitions as well. So, We've been very lucky. We've got nothing we can cry or complain about, to be fair. I think it is just like leaving, like leaving what all you know, isn't it? Like all we know is the UK and our jobs and the job security, and and then you're you're kind of leaving all of that for something completely new. So I think that in itself is challenging. The only thing that I would say I wasn't quite aware of, although again you did mention it in one of your videos, was just how expensive it is to get set up when you first land here mm. as well. So yeah. bleeding money. Like yeah, that's exactly how we feel right now. And thousands of dollars have, have left the account. And yeah, it's, um, yeah. I, I wasn't quite. I, I wasn't quite sort of understanding how much money it costs just to get set up. Mm. But we're there now. How much do you reckon you've spent so far in the first four weeks? Oh my gosh! Oh my. If you don't mind me asking, I reckon fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars. Yeah, probably that. Yeah, and that, that's... we've got nothing to prove for that. I don't feel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to, to be fair, we've still not even got a car or anything yet. So that's still yeah, we're still like rent, like hiring a car, aren't we? So we've still got that to. But just to with go. rent and food. Oh could, no! I could, actually, I could... can I can I quickly just say a lot of this money has gone on school fees, just the usual, like you know, I don't know, hundred dollars or whatever it is, and we went, we stationery went... for the kids. We went to buy school uniform for. Oh yeah, school uniform. We went to buy school uniform for our, for our kids. Now in in the UK, you can you know you can get expensive stuff, but most people we you used to go, go to Tesco's Tesco. or something. Yeah. yeah, you know your your ten pound. <laughs> Over here, we we went to the shop and they handed us this piece of paper. I looked at it and for like the 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 jacket with the school logo on for my daughter, it was like one hundred and fifteen dollars. Yeah. And I was like, you what for a jacket? Yeah. Which is probably not even going to wear because we live in Perth and it's roasting off. <laughs> Oh, you'd be surprised. So we have the same thing where I uh, work as well. Now, our jacket isn't as expensive. I think it might be maybe 80, 80, 90 bucks, um, which a lot of our kids scoff at. They're like, oh, why, why, why can't I just wear my own jacket? No, you've got to wear the school logo one. But as soon as the temperature drops, I would go even as far as to say it has a two in front of it. Like not, not a three, just a two jackets come out. Like it's like they're freezing. Yeah. I remember when I first came here, like my first year, and I'm still in shorts and t-shirt because it's it's like 18 degrees, and they're they're literally shivering in my classroom. Like, so can we put the heating on, please? <laughs> <laughs> they were gonna freeze to death. I was like, no, like yeah. I'm, I'm warm. I'm in charge of the aircon. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure we'll acclimatize and we'll be the same. I'm but sure. yeah, at, at, at the moment, it's it's like lovely summer weather in the uk here at the minute so. yeah it's quite nice the other thing that we didn't realize was that um so latia our eldest would also need so she's got a laptop but that wasn't good enough it had to be a specific laptop yep. touch screen yeah we weren't prepared for that that was quite expensive so that was 1500 bucks we didn't expect <laughs> yeah Yes, exactly that. The school makes you buy a fifteen hundred dollar laptop. That, that is unreasonable. And that was just for a what a Lenovo. So there's Mike you can buy Microsoft as well, which was like a few hundred bucks more. Like crazy. 
So yeah, that was an expense that we weren't. Apparently, apparently the schools did used to buy them themselves, and then you could You'd like hire, hire, you them, could hire yeah. them out for a couple of hundred bucks but, a year. But they they stopped doing that last year, so now every yeah. student has to buy their own laptops. Are you are your kids in state or private education? State. Wow, and the state school says fifty. That's got to be. What, what would you imagine if there were parents out there that were like, no, I can't afford it, like, and rightly so, like, it's a fifteen hundred dollar laptop. Oh, the head teacher was like, "There's like three children that, that don't have one." I was like, "I'm sure there are, because that's a it's a lot of money." Like, but then you don't want your kid to be the one that is different. Do you know what I mean? So you pay it, don't you? Especially when they're the new kids, yeah. you don't want them to have the. They'll be the new poor kid. Yeah. You, know, you don't, you don't <laughs> yeah. want them to have all the trampy clothes. You don't want them to be the one without the laptop. So yeah. you you find a way, don't you? But yeah, it's not. It, yeah it wasn't cheap yeah wow so there you go there's even more reason to move over with younger children get it yes. done sooner rather than later yeah. because otherwise you're going to get stung it, with uh exactly. hardware purchases exactly it's all right we've only got to do it four times <laughs> <laughs> well when the first one's uh finished with that one you can pass it down guys. <laughs> it'll be an antique won't it at the end <laughs> yeah there'll be it won't even be a touch screen now it'll be like a think screen like you won't even have to just look at it yeah. and it'll just do it yeah is there anything else that you were expecting your new life to be like or wanting from your new life we're, we're too new in the country to be able to say you know that this hasn't happened and we wanted it to um but truth be told again i think we have all those aussie dreams we just want to be down the beach as much as we can i want a boat you know yeah, I, I, I wanna, he's obsessed I want, with wanting a boat want, even if it's just a dinghy to get that's another sixteen grand. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go with a, a dinghy and a, and a uh, an engine on the back. But uh, you know. they call them tinnies here. Tinnies. tinnies. Okay. There that's you go. what. That's probably what we'll be able to afford. Doing. Well, if that's what I can afford, that's what I'll take. I, I want that. I just want the outdoor lifestyle. I want to be able to spend time with my kids. I want me and Jazz to be able to go for the walks down the beach. Mm. Um, and we want to get out and meet people. You know. So again, if there's anybody that does end up seeing this video and feels like <laughs> you, having a new friend, give us a shout. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think um, also for us that like, I've never been camping ever in my life. I, I know, right? I know, and I've never wanted to. Even in the UK, the kids would have were always on about camping. I was like, no, I'm not doing it. Since being here, I hundred percent want to go camping. Like, yeah, that's definitely on our to do list, isn't it? Next. How would you feel though about sleeping on the floor? That was Sam's big no no. If I'm going to go camp, we used to go camping in England. We used to sleep on the floor, but apparently because of all the things that are going to just. Cr- crawl into her sleeping bag and kill her no nope, not going on the floor how do you feel about that yeah i'm not sure about that yet i she's, think she's been looking at the rooftop yeah i have looked at the like rooftop that, so. to to protect myself um yeah i mean this is why i didn't go in the uk and there's nothing really to be scared of in the uk is there so let alone here i don't know how i'd feel if i woke up with like a snake or something in bed with me that freaked me out. You said like you're renting for the next 12 months. What are, you want a boat? You want a, <laughs> preferably something more than a tinny. You might want to go camping. <laughs> what are your, your big plans for the future? Oh, we definitely want to buy a house here, don't we? Buying a house with a pool. Our rental doesn't have a pool. We 100% want a pool. And yeah, just even like just traveling, like just making the most of going to all, all the lovely places that are here. So we're definitely doing that. Tra- tra- yeah, exactly. Uh, for me, one of the big things I want to do, and, and the kids have already said as well, like um, our second daughter, Indy, um, she's obsessed with Japanese culture and stuff like that. So she said, you know, we want she wants to go to Japan. Um, and again, it's it, it's very reasonably priced to be able to do things like that and, and experience the rest of Asia and stuff. Um, Bali's just... You know, a short, yeah, Bali short flight away, is so she wants to buy, on go to Bali. how to do this for sure. Um, so, so yeah, I just think again, just just everything that you have, uh, you could spend ten years going around Australia and you wouldn't have seen it all. You know, so there's so much for us to try and get get our claws into and and just love this new life that we have. But on the doorstep as well, you do have the opportunities to go out and experience New Zealand or Bali or Asia mm. or. You know, all that sort of stuff. Even like the east coast of Australia, though, like we definitely want to do that. I think the thing is, you grow up like in the UK, don't you? And you kind of take everything for granted. This is where I've grown up. This is there are so many places in the UK we didn't go to, so many. Mm. And I think you've, we've worked so hard to get here. It's cost an absolute bomb. So now we need to make the most of it. Like we need to enjoy. It. And I think I've I found that hard when we first got here. I was like, I've got this massive list of all these things we've got to do. And then I thought, we're living here now. Like that's it. We're not not here on a holiday. We've got loads of time. That we will get through this list, but but the, but the other thing as well is it doesn't have to cost a fortune yeah, on the exactly. west coast to to enjoy yeah the west coast. So you know you go from Exmouth all the way down to Esperance, and as mm. long as you have 
a car and, and a tent, mm. you, you can see all these beautiful things. And that, that's what we want to do. But even silly things, like you you can go to the beach here and you don't have to pay for parking. Like, oh, oh it's crazy. Yep. And there's actually parking spaces. Like, whereas in the UK, oh, it would just be a nightmare. But yeah, I've been surprised at all the places we've been to. We haven't paid parking like once, have we? For anywhere. I mean, some of the, the more popular areas and stuff, like if, if I want to go into the city, I've got to pay for parking. Again, it's it's reasonable. Um, I, I swear I used to pay more for parking just going into Reading Town Centre. Mm. Um, I did have to pay when we went to Byron. When we went to Byron Bay, there was parking there. That shocked me. Again, it wasn't a lot. It was maybe like two or three bucks an hour. It, but it, even that, I was like, what? Well, I'm, I'm, am I going to do an hour and a half or am I going to do two hours? Like that's that's really, really expensive. It's not even half a schooner, is it? You know, why am I arguing over a couple of bucks? And then I imagine, obviously, if you lived in some of the big cities, you know, if you wanted to park outside Bondi, it's, it's going to yeah. cost money and you definitely aren't really going to get a space. It's when things used to cost money and you didn't necessarily live anywhere fancy in the UK. And you're like, I'm, I'm paying for this. What am I actually paying yeah. for? You know, kind of what my what are my council rates going for if I'm still having to pay for all of these little things? And yeah, I mean, you'll probably see it more as you get settled in that the stuff that you pay your rates for it gets well spent. Like things actually get done, things get cleaned. Mm-hmm. You know, those barbecues that you use, you, you try and leave them reasonably clean, but you go back the next day and it's spotless. Yeah. Even yeah. down to simple things like the quality of the roads. You know. Mm-hmm. It, it, I haven't seen a pothole yet. Oh yeah, like, there's so many pothole in the UK. <laughs> yeah, where, where we are in the UK, you spend all day, every day <laughs> like dodging them. You know, it's, 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 it's a game of crazy cars trying to trying to get down the road. The UK has lots and lots of benefits in terms of you know family and things like that. But I just think that over here, the pace of life, um, what money gets spent on, so the infrastructure. I, I need to use trains to get to work into the CBD, or that that's the most efficient way of me getting into work and stuff like that. And we, we give it a try the other day and every single train was on time mm. and it, you know, it takes yeah. to get into the city. It took 20 minutes to get mm. into the city. In the UK, it's, it's always trains are delayed and you, it's, it's just well, a pain. they're full, like they're really yeah. full as well, aren't they? So it's just... It, How much did it cost you train to get in the city? Uh, it was $5 there, $5 back. Yeah. Um, you, <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. And, and also, and also it it, we, we actually went in and spent the $10 all day ticket and meant we could go to all nine zones Mm. within WA as Mm. well. So we actually, we could go as far as we wanted on this, this $10 a day train. Um, Which is what it would have cost you anyway. Five there, five there. Exactly. 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 Exactly that. I think the thing is you always hear like, I remember always thinking this, but always being like, is the grass greener? Like, is the, you know, that old saying. And I think you, could just spend all your time thinking about that in the UK and just wondering it all the time. And it's, the UK is not a bad place to be. It's not awful. I don't think it's awful. We're quite lucky over there for certain things. However, I just think it's just a bit better here, isn't it? Like everywhere's just a bit cleaner. It's, 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 not, just... it's not It's not just a bit better. When they say it's the grass green, <laughs> my answer is yes. And the sun is out and the, <laughs> yeah. and the sea is clear and warm and it, it, it's yeah. all there. It's, it's, it's great. I think the weather for me is a massive, massive thing. I think oh, it just feels so grey and like wet in the UK for such a long period of time doesn't it I think the the weather being nice means you can go out with the kids and do more stuff you've got that opportunity to do that if you want to and do the free thing you can just take to the beach that's free so many playgrounds as well so many lovely playgrounds for kids that are just they're I mean the kids love it all of them they just think it's amazing so even that you know, everywhere you go, there's like a new playground. It's exciting, isn't it? I think every, I think everything here in Western Australia is is well thought out as well. So you have your playgrounds, but you also have your public toilets right next to it, and they're mm. always clean. Mm. And you have uh, with your beach, you have your shower facilities as you come off the beach so that you can clean your feet and all that sort of. Everything just seems to work, and mm. you know you can't ask for more than that, can you? And I feel like there's so much to do here. I mean, we haven't obviously been here very long, and there's you know we've got so much to learn, like everything where to go lingo everything but the um there's just so much to do on this side like I feel like when people are sometimes put off by coming to Perth maybe because they feel like it's isolated and there's not much to do I just feel like there's so much to do already like we've been busy every single day going out with the kids and doing stuff and we've only literally been half an hour north half an hour south of where we live like we haven't even gone out of that yet so yeah, I just feel there's so much to do here, isn't there? Is there anything that's surprised you about Perth 
or, or about the moving process in general? From a positive perspective, just how easy it's been. Going through the agencies that we've been through, uh, nothing was ever too much. So it, it felt like it was made easy. Um, we've not had to face any adversity or any problems or barriers or anything like that. It's gone smoothly. Um, the only thing that I suppose we knew it, it was going to be expensive, but not as expensive as it has been. You know, it cost a very large sum of money for us to get over it because we got the four kids and that sort of <laughs> stuff. It was eleven thousand dollars just for the visas, and then you've got everything else on top of that. Um, mm -hmm. And then the cost once you get here. The first, the first few months of setting up, it really, mm. it really does hit the bank balance. But as long as you're aware of that and you're prepared and you've got, you know, or, or you're willing to sacrifice a few things, you know, a few home comforts and stuff. At the moment, we, we went to Ikea and spent $4,000 4, in Ikea. We've got an L-shaped bed, a bed for each of the kids. And at the moment, we we got a, a curved TV off of Facebook Marketplace, which is sat on one of the... the on a cardboard box. It's sat on a cardboard box. At one of the oh, careful of the cardboard box. You might not have a TV for very long. Inside of the house is a bit bare, and it will be until a lot of our stuff turns up. But we don't spend much time in it anyway. So it's not the end of the world, you know. Do you have any regrets about the move or any of the process? Anything you'd do again? The only thing for me is the dog. We we had to leave and the a, dog. And a cat. We did leave the cat as well. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we left the cat as well. But the cat was, um, the cat's like 13 odd years old. So I just felt it would have been unfair to, to put her through the quarantine and the journey and all that sort of stuff. But the dog, the, the, the dog is nine years old. Um, she could have probably have made the journey. But again... It, it was one of those where I, I, I just wasn't 100% sure it would have been the right thing for her. So we, we ended up giving her to Jazzy's parents and, you know, they, they love it there. They treat her like a little princess. Mm. They've got a dog themselves and she she's loving life. So, But for me, I, I've always been an animal lover. So leaving the dog at home was tough. Yeah, no, we had exactly the same thing. And uh, it sounds like I'd be the same. I'm, I'm disappointed I left the dog. <laughs> and then Sam would pipe in going, what about my cat? Yeah, <laughs> no. And the same thing, uh, her cat, Frank, he was... Uh, he was the older one. He was the one that even on a mile trip down to the vets, he he would expel yeah. everything from inside his body in his little uh, in his little crate. And it was like, how, how is he going to yeah. cope on a 24 yeah. hour flight and then having in the quarantine? Yeah, she probably wouldn't have minded the quarantine. He, he quite liked it when we went on holidays <laughs> and he was in his little place. They normally have those like little heated cat pods. He loved it. He didn't want to come out. But yeah, we, we left the dog similar ages. Uh, and, and thankfully as well, the same kind of story. They live with Sam's parents. They've probably got a better life than we could have ever provided for them. If you could do it all again, what would you change? Just do it sooner. <laughs> Just stop wondering, like stop like worrying and wondering and putting it off. Yeah, and just do it sooner. I, that's, yeah, probably that's probably my only regret as well that I wish. I mean, I guess we did it now because it was the right time, and I guess you have to get to that time, don't you, in life that for, it makes it work. But the best time is when you exactly. do it, isn't it? But um, yeah, other than that, I don't think I'll change anything. I think I think for me, within my job role as a, as a, as a project manager, I, I would say you know a big part of of my role is trust in the process, and I would do that more through mm. this. You know, I, I wanted to because of the money that was involved and the uncertainty of am I going to get offered a visa and when and is it going to get granted and when's it coming? I didn't deal very well with that element of it. So I, I would just say I would trust the process. We paid people a lot of money to do this for us and they did a really, really good job of doing it. So just trust them and don't stress over the small stuff. It will happen when it's meant to happen. Yeah. Um, we're not patient people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that Australia will make us a bit more patient because I feel like everything is just at a different pace. And even when we've been into like the school to do things, they're like, "Don't worry, I'll get done. Like, just it's fine." Like it's just that. And so, yeah, maybe we if we've been more patient in the process, and we didn't even have to wait that long compared to some people, you know. So, yeah, compared compared to some people yeah. who have said, you know, they, they've had a couple of years of wait and stuff like that, I would have been tearing my hair out. But even even little things like oh. Over in the UK, if I wanted something, I could have it tomorrow and it'd be there but with, through Amazon Prime. Mm. Over here, I, I, I went to the beach the other day. I went to be, the beach last week. I lost my glasses. Um, I, you know, but they're still not here. They, <laughs> I, I ordered them over a week ago. They're still not here. So, What did you order? Just, just normal uh, yeah, glasses. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah just, not even special just, ones. Just, 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 a, just a quick set that he needed for his medicals for work. And then, yeah. yeah. 
So at the minute, I'm I'm going to be going and doing the medicals wearing my daughter's glasses because uh, <laughs> pretty much see. pretty much the same prescription, but obviously they're about half the size of mine. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say I didn't realise they were they were glasses glasses. I thought you meant like sunglasses. I'd have just suggested yeah, I go to Kmart. No, no, no. no. <laughs> sort you out for prescription. Yeah. What advice would you give to people who are also wanting to make the move? Just do it, yeah, just do it. I think, obviously, we watched, like, so many YouTube videos and followed people on Instagram, that sort of stuff. Obviously, we watched you every Sunday. That was our thing. Every Sunday, we had a day off, and we'd catch up, like, on watching YouTube videos and stuff. So I think that helps. Um, The one thing I found, because I've started, like, my Instagram, um, like, Thompson's Go Aussie, and I started that purely to just give people advice and help people because you get really interested and fixated in in people's like I said timelines their visas what they do how long things take places to go and we that's the reason why I set that up was purely so that I could post our process and people have loved that I've had so many private messages from people um really interested in how long things have taken and what's sort of happened and like now that we're here, like how's that all gone? Do you know what I mean? And it's actually really nice that you can give people advice and sort of help people in the process because it's really scary when you're doing it and you don't know anything. Like you, it's just all the unknown, isn't it? And it's such, it's a minefield to me, which is obviously why we pay somebody to do the, the process for us because I wanted to know that they could deal with it and that it would work and that we would eventually get there. So I think it's it's just being brave. You've just got to be brave and yeah, just go for it because... What's the worst that happens? If you don't like it, you go back. It's a, it's a lot of money, but you just go back, don't you? I think for us, it was that we we didn't want to get to like retirement age and regret not trying it. Make sure you do your due diligence. You know, make sure you know what you're getting into. Make sure you understand how much it costs. Because again, we do know of people. We've been speaking to people through this process who they weren't quite aware of everything how, how much everything cost and you know that kept delaying them putting st- stops on in in front of them and things like that and then because a lot of people weren't didn't go into it with their eyes wide open you do hear of quite a few people coming mm-hmm. back to the UK and stuff like that so what i will say is for us obviously it's been a 15 18 year conversation we've we've looked at everything we made sure we understood the prices of everything we've watched people like yourself giving us all this advice and telling us just how expensive it was going to be when we first landed and things like that. So we've come over here and although we're hemorrhaging money, mm. we, we knew it we was knew, going to yeah. happen until we, we got jobs. Mm. Um, so none of it is a, is, a, is a surprise that's going to make us want to go back. But as long as you come into this process with your eyes open and you genuinely do have it as a lifelong ambition and dream because you know it's what you want to do for the rest of your life, do it but I think also like you don't move to Australia because you want it to be the same as the UK and I think you have to come over here knowing that it is going to be a different way of living and work is going to be different your food's going to be different the way people drive is different you know everything is different because it's not the UK but that's also okay it's not a bad thing it's just Hmm. learning to just live a, a different life isn't it and that's you know why we came because we wanted something different we wanted something exciting and just you know I don't know for a better life which is exactly why we wanted to do it and I can't imagine us ever going back to the UK already the moment the kids stepped foot on that beach they were like we're never going back to England (laughs) so Kyron always always said like the last few months yeah there's no way I'm getting in that water you know too many things that are going to bite me and, and mess me up as soon as he put his toe in that water, you can't get. You him can't out. get him out. He'll be, like, he'll be in there after sunset and all sorts of stuff. He's, yeah. he's an absolute maniac for it now. So, and I think being able to give the kids that life and being able for them to just have so many opportunities of like doing outdoor things and having fun, like what more could you ask for? Just and the good thing is now is that so my basically my nan's sister came over when it was the whole ten pound pom thing. And so my nan had this image of like, well, you're going to go like she did and we're never going to see you or speak to you ever again, that type of thing. But actually, we've spoken to our family and friends more since we've been here than what we ever would have in the UK. Like we FaceTime all the time, we message all the time, send updates to the kids all the time. Whereas in the UK, we could go weeks without speaking to each other. And we also used to live about two hours down the road mm. from them. So we might see them maybe four or five times a year for a day. And most of that day is taken up because, you know, driving yeah. or, or whatever. Whereas I think we'll probably see them every maybe 18 months or so over here. But when they come over, they'll come over for two to four weeks. And that'll be good quality, quality time, time that we yeah. can actually spend together. So 
when you weigh it up, yes, you're a long way away, but with technology the way it is nowadays, there is nothing to stop you from having the same amount of communication and conversation that you had at home. And you can just jump on a flight and get to to, to see your family mm. if you really wanted or needed to. Uh, and speaking of the kids, do you want to go and grab them? We'll see what, what they think about the process and all of their of moves. Course. First of all, what are all of your names? Because there's so many. This is like, you're like buses. <laughs> We've never had a kid on the show before. And then now we get four. This is great. Indy. Indy. I'm Kyron. Kyron. I'm Latia. Latia. <laughs> and Aiden, oh, you sound Jayden, J- sorry, yes. Jaden. Jaden, you sound like you're going to be a troublemaker. Are you a troublemaker? <laughs> He's a bit of a troublemaker. Oh. <laughs> Can you tell me what your life was like before you moved to Australia? So the good thing about it all was that we was there. We was used to like the coldness. Where now we are here is kind of hot, and we're not used to it. Okay. Anyone else want to add something? Uh, my favourite thing about like being in the UK was probably just knowing where everything was, having people, oh. like our friends and all our families still over there. So mm-hmm. it was just like knowing everything about the area and obviously coming here, it's just like a fresh start. We don't know where anything is. Where yeah, we, people. Were, we were used to everything. Yeah. What for you was the most important thing that you wanted to get when you moved to Australia? Oh, that's a good one. I'm full of good questions, me. <laughs> I think for me it was just like getting to know people, just settling in, going like sorting out going to school, meeting new people, making friends, just like making it seem normal again like it was in the UK. And I know you've not necessarily been in Australia so long, but how have, how have you found that? How have you found that transition? Good. Good. Yeah, good. I think yeah. Yeah. I think it's been quite good. I mean, we've met quite a few people and everyone's been really nice. And it's been like a really good experience so far. Have you been able to lean on each other? If you were on your own, there's four of you, it's great. You you can tell that you've got a really good relationship as brothers and sisters. How much more difficult do you think it could have been if it was just one of you? Much more difficult. We normally have each other to play with. I feel like we've always got each other to back each other up and like, to keep each other entertained and to like help each other out and like the funny one <laughs> <laughs> if it was just one of us it would have been much harder to settle in and feel comfortable i feel what's been the biggest challenge so far for you guys making I... friends or like starting new things and like settling in and uh, like the first day of school has is hard adjusting i would probably just say like not knowing anyone so like the unknown aspect of it having to restart again with only just the six of us in this household not knowing anyone what about you what, what have you liked about australia <laughs> you shy he's shy i know he's a terror when he's not got a camera in his face <laughs> Is there anything that you were expecting Australia to be like? I was expecting people to be like nicer. Nicer? Yeah, nicer. I thought people were already really nice. They are. You wanted them to be even more chatty. Is that just adults or is that like children like yourselves? Do you mean that the children are not as chatty or they're more chatty? More chatty. Okay, so they're more outgoing. Ah, we've got it completely wrong. I thought for a second you were going to say, no, Australians don't like talking to me. (laughs) No, you've got got lots of days out down the beach and and at the parks and stuff like that and the kids always come and play. They're very welcoming. They invite you in to, to have fun, don't they? Yeah. What's the longest you've had to wait at the park for someone to come and play with you? Not long, I don't think. We haven't had to. You haven't had to? There's, yeah, there you go. There's your answer. Kids love everyone. Yeah, they've, everyone's been really welcoming and really kind. And it's just made our move a lot easier from my perspective. And it's just been a really good start to our journey. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. What plans do you have personally? Like, What do you want in the next few weeks few months what 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 are you looking forward to some things like when everything arrives and stuff ah so you're waiting for things to arrive how long is that going to be probably a few weeks what have you packed that you're waiting for what do you re- what are you really looking forward to bikes there you uh, go all our toys yeah bikes and toys yeah in the meantime <laughs> you're just having to make do <laughs> sticks and rocks climbing trees yeah Yeah. is there anything that's surprised you about moving we haven't actually seen any spiders or snakes or like sharks yet which 
I know it, it's going to be, it's going to happen, but I feel like I expected it to happen a lot sooner than we have gone without seeing them. Is that right. one of your biggest fears when you were thought, oh, we're moving to Australia? Isn't there things that yeah. kill you there? Yeah, <laughs> we were all a bit scared, I think. About have you gone looking for them? Yes. Yeah. 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 Have you? You've been, been looking for searching. snakes. You've been looking for snakes and spiders. Have you seen a blue tongue lizard yet? Do you get them in Perth? I have heard that we do. Yeah. We've got one at the school where I teach, and he lives in the bushes just outside the staff room. And he always scares me because they move like a snake. They've got a head like a snake. I think it's like a defense mechanism. They're supposed to look a bit like them. And whenever he pops out, I I always think there's a snake there and I get scared every single time. Well, as a general rule, as long as you don't go super looking for them, like don't, you can't play like you did in England going running through bushes and things. You've got to be a little bit careful. Yeah, you're going to promise me you're going to be careful when that kind of thing comes? That's what I always have to say to my kids. Yeah. Do you have anything about moving to Australia that you'd either, you'd do again or you'd change? No. No? It's all gone perfect. Look at you. You should manage people's move to Australia. You know how to do it all. I mean, it would be lovely if like some of the food, like what was it we didn't like the other day? The cheese. Yeah. Yeah, they were a bit fussy about the cheese. The ketchup. (laughs) <laughs> what was wrong with the cheese? Now, my wife had exactly the same issue. Come on, what was wrong with the cheese? Why didn't you like it? It was just like really broccoli. <laughs> it's not like English cheese, is it? It's not got as much of a, a flavour and you like it to break off a little bit. You're more of a, yeah. You sound like more of a mature cheddar type of person. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Did you ever like cheese strings in the UK? Yeah, I need a little bit. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I didn't mind a cheese string, but I find Australian cheeses a little bit more like cheese strings. Whereas sometimes you want, you know, we've, we've got refined palates. It's lovely to see a younger person that's sitting there, you know. You'll be, you'll be drinking red wine next, won't you? So the cheese. Okay, anything else other than the cheese? Um, the chocolate. That's a big issue. Tell me about the chocolate. Yeah, um, We did a chocolate taste test on, like, our YouTube channel, and it's just a bit like... Uh... You've got a YouTube channel too? Yeah. Go on, give it a plug. Uh, kids go Aussie. Kids go Aussie. If you want to understand more about the move to Australia <laughs> from a, a kid's perspective, go check out Kids Go Aussie. <laughs> they try chocolate and tell you exactly how it is. What's your favourite Aussie chocolate? Do you even have one yet? No. no. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I know. Which is your favourite one? Dairy, because that's the only one we've tried. Yeah. Slightly different, I find. Do you, do you want me to give you a bit of advice about one that I think is really, really good? Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. Caramel milk. I've heard about that. Oh, so good. It's like white chocolate, but it's just got a bit more flavour. It's not quite, it's not white, it's not milk chocolate, but it's also not in the middle. It's like different. It's like, um, like caramel. I think that's why it's called caramel milk. Caramel mixed with milk chocolate. It's okay. awesome. Do you have any advice for other young people who are being forced to make the move to Australia. They've been dragged across the other side of the world with this, oh, it's going to be a better life for you. What advice do you have for those kind of people? It's really not as bad as they think it is. It's, yeah, it is. It's once, once you're here, it's, it's like, beautiful, it's amazing, and you're really going to enjoy it. It is a better life, yeah. Even with all the difficulties, even with the little plastic dogs on your head, <laughs> yeah. it's not going to be the end of the world. <laughs> Until your toys arrive, and then it's even better. Yeah. yeah. It's all fun in the sun. <laughs> Fantastic kids. Is there anything else that you'd like to say? It can be a bit overwhelming, like moving to the other side of the world. It's a long flight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about the flight. The flight, we mostly just slept on the second flight. Mm-hmm. We did a stopover in Qatar. It was like six and a half hours. and then like Ooh, long one. I slept, hours. Yeah, I slept when the plane got off two hands. I know. You slept on both takeoffs, didn't you, mate? But for the second um, plane journey, we it was like at 2 a.m. in the morning, so we were like asleep for most of it, but it was really long. I was asleep <laughs> for like, it, it was I, was, very long. I was only awake for like four of that, four yeah. hours of that flight. What was the food like? I didn't uh, like it. I like the British <laughs> Airway food. Okay. <laughs> Qatar Airways, okay. people like a... Uh, a beef curry thing for breakfast didn't they it was a bit weird. <laughs> yeah it's always um local to wherever you land so i always found flying out of england it was always 
okay because it was more familiar but then when you have to stand you have a, a stopover in well anywhere that's the other side of the world and it's it's completely different it's more of a local cuisine you get used to it you get used to it something it's just it's like a surprise yeah you don't have to eat it as well just bring a bag full of lollies you'll be all right oh you say lollies oh you wait you'll start changing all <laughs> of your uh terminology the kids change it quicker it's when it starts to rain and you want to get your gum boots on that's when uh, i still laugh at aurora oh, and you'll change as well when you're at school because otherwise you'll be the weirdo it's when i get corrected by my four-year-old now who says no daddy it's not yogurt it's yogurt but i'll never change and i'll never say data always say data promise me that Uh, that happened to me yesterday i said oh do you she um someone i know went oh my data's not working i was like do you mean data and she was like that is so weird (laughs) (laughs) thanks jazz martin and all the kids for sharing your migration journey with us i hope it's given you all a greater insight into the moving journey and what it's like actually making the move to australia if you want to see more of what our life is like in australia then you can go over and check out our channel on youtube at that johnston life or if you want to see the kids channel and see everything from a kid's perspective make sure to check them out on kids go aussie and if all of this has inspired you to want to make the move yourself then make sure you speak to our friends friends true blue migration services mention us and let them tell you for free the easiest way for you to realize your dreams of moving to australia follow the hundreds of positive reviews by filling in their free visa eligibility assessment on their website at www.truebluemigration.com see you next time